Hi everybody, today I'm going to go over multi-wire branch circuits and those codes and maybe some problems and some cool things uh, associated with multi-wire branch circuits. But before we get into multi-wire branch circuits, we really have to know what a multi-wire branch circuit is. According to Article 100 in the National Electrical Code, a multi-wire branch circuit is any circuit that uses more than two ungrounded conductors. And this little uh, example, uh, this would be something that we would find in a dwelling unit in our home where we have two ungrounded conductors for our 240 volt system. Um, so let's look at some of these different types of multi-wire branch circuits. In this situation, we ha have a home run, if you will, that comes in uh, with 12 or 14, three and M cable. My black wire ties through and goes to this outlet. So I have a circuit here, uh, independent, but it, it shares a neutral with this guy. My red wire in my 14.3 hits this. So I don't have to pull two separate home runs to individual um, receptacles. I could pull one and splice it this way. Now there's some, some things that could happen there. If you have an issue, you would have to try to find where the splice was inside of an outlet. That would be hard. Uh, but in theory, this all works and it's okay and it's up to code that you can do that, depending on if you do a few of the things that we talked about. In this case right here, we have a receptacle. Well, that's, in this case right here, we have a receptacle that we pulled a, also a 14.3, but we broke the tab off uh, on this receptacle. So you have an ungrounded conductor or hot, an ungrounded conductor here, an ungrounded there, and sharing a neutral. Now, if you didn't break that tab, obviously we would have some issues, and you would have a short circuit and trip a breaker, and it wouldn't be, it would be kind of a hazard. So we wouldn't want to do that. You break the tab, you get 120 there, 120 there. Um, that doesn't happen all the time. I've done that in commercial jobs for, for different applications. Now, one thing to note in 210.7, if you did pull two separate home runs, even though you had different neutrals, um, you would have to be able to simultaneously turn those off when you worked on them, okay? Now this guy right here is a multi-wire branch circuit. We all have these in our houses. This is uh, some sort of a dryer vent or a range. And um, actually this is just a dryer, but in this case we only have two hots. We didn't have a neutral. And there's an exception in 210.4C um, exception two that says a line to line circuit can be considered as long as, uh, or can, is a multi-wire branch circuit and you can do that as long as the breaker trips internally at the same time. So um, the codes associated with these um, would be 210.4 and 210.4A says that the, each one of these ungrounded conductors or hot conductors have to originate from the same panel board. I can't go to panel A, take a hot and a panel B and a hot and a neutral and feed these. They have to come from the same panel board. And we also want to make sure that our, our two ungrounded conductors come from two separate phases, A phase and B phase, so that, um, so that we don't have any issues. If Let's say we had a toaster here and it pulled 10 amps and a vacuum that pulled 12 amps. Um, if we did this right, we would have two amps coming back on our neutral if they were both running at the same time because it takes back the unbalance between the two. Now, let's say we put them on the same phase. We put A phase, A phase, or B phase, B phase with these two ungrounded conductors. Um, now we would have 22 amps coming back on our neutral because it would become additive with, those, with that amperage instead of taking back the unbalanced load. So it can be unsafe. Um, another code in 210.4B, um, all these ungrounded conductors have to simultaneously disconnect. Now, I have a story of a, a time when I was in the field and uh, one of my guys went and turned off a breaker number two because he was working on circuit two. And um, as he opened up the neutral, it was a multi-wire branch circuit shared with other lighting. Uh, when he opened up the neutral, it started popping and he got scared and was you know, letting it all loose. And by the time he got the wire net on, he had blown up every driver and all the brand new LED lights in the office building. So. Uh, we need to simultaneously turn off all the ungrounded conductors or hot conductors uh, for a few reasons. We don't want somebody to get hit by that neutral. Again, that neutral is, an, is a current carrying conductor. It's going to bring current back on it. Number two, like I said, if you turn off one, there's possibility of you messing with electronics and different things that way. Um, 210, 210.4D says that um, when you do share neutrals and J boxes and have multiple circuits in the same thing, we want to identify those circuits uh, with your new associated neutrals and the ground conductors, whether it be by zip tie 
uh, electrical tape or some way of, of making sure that those neutrals and hots can't be snagged in by somebody else and, and tied up to, and tied in through other things. So um, there's a lot here on 210.4. Please take the time to look at those codes. As electricians, we utilize this kind of stuff all the time. I did a, uh, a restaurant that had a bubble wall, and in that bubble wall, um, the pump blew a bunch of bubbles up in this big glass wall, and then the other, and then there was LED lights, and we would pull the same thing we got here. We would pull a, a 12 3 and we would do, we'd break the tab, and the LED would come off the one outlet uh, on the top, and then on the bottom, you would have the pump blow off of, of that. And so, as long as those simultaneously disconnected either from a two pole breaker or from a breaker that has uh, identified handle ties, according to 210.4D. Hope that helps you guys out and be safe with this stuff because. Uh, Electrical can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I hope that helps you guys.